So it's very nice to be here on a short intermission between lecturing two hours in the morning and three hours in the afternoon at KTH. The nice thing is that the lecture hall looks slightly different than at KTH. Okay, I'm going to talk about the solar option uh, with a slight focus on what we're doing at KTH. And um, if you look at the solar option and regarding energy consumption, you might wonder if it exists at all. I mean, the solar part of energy production in the world today is vanishingly small. And um, things are probably going to change in the future, or at least hopefully. We, you've probably seen quite a number of these prognoses during the morning here. Here is another one. Uh, there are lots of um, organization producing these and uh, of course different numbers to everything. Everybody agree that energy consumption will increase in the future and quite dramatically. You heard a figure of three, maybe it's a figure of two, and you might think, well, it's just a factor of two or three. But if you put it in perspective, it's quite a lot. It's a factor of two would correspond to building one new gigawatt nuclear reactor per day, every day for 30 years. It's not going to happen. At the same time, it's less than one hour of solar radiation globally. So that sort of hints where the solar option is. I should say also that when I talk about solar produced energy today, I will concentrate very much on the conversion to electricity, solar cells. I will sort of forget the solar fuel option. It's there, definitely, but at the present stage is more on a research level. Nevertheless, let's have a look at the alternatives. What can we do? And uh, many of the figures I give here, they're taken from the Department of Energy in the US. And you could argue about the numbers here, but certainly the solar option comes out as a very feasible alternative. So what's the problem? Why doesn't it exist everywhere today? Well, it exists somewhere. If you look at the sales of solar cells or modules, it grows exponentially like this. The problem is that it's completely subsidy driven. Uh, if you go to a country such as Spain, they had the same growth tendency but then they stopped with the subsidies and the sales of solar modules went down to zero, essentially. Nevertheless, it happens. Germany is it's a very strong country in this field. Last year, they installed solar modules corresponding to five gigawatt peak uh, and electricity production, which is quite substantial. And then, of course, you have to calculate the number of solar hours you have, but nevertheless, it is a growing field. There are two existing technologies today. The one you oft, most often see is the silicon-based. It's been around for quite a while. There are different types, amorphous, polycrystalline, crystalline, etc. And as you increase efficiency and um, complexity, of course, price goes up as well. There's another emerging technology which is very commercial today. And if you go back to Germany and the investments being done there, they have sort of caught up with the silicon-based ones. That's the thin film type of solar cells. Um, there's a strong group in Uppsala, for instance, doing six cells. Of course, cadmium telluride is growing enormously as well. So this is a very growing field, but still today, if they are not subsidized, they are too expensive. And the consequences, of course, is that nobody is prepared to pay the prices to replace other types of more inexpensive production of energy today. Maybe they won't be as available in the future. But there are emerging technologies as well. And what we're going for is to have solar cells that are both inexpensive to make and efficient. And there are emerging technologies based on polymers, for instance, polymeric types of solar cells, and what you could call molecular types of solar cells. You don't see them in the market today simply because they are more on the research stage, but on the verge of being commercialized at the moment. And the peak or the target is to have a production cost which is less than half a euro per peak watt, or if you want to compare it to, to another figure, if you buy a solar module or panel, it should cost less than 1,000 krona per square meter. Now that's quite a challenge 